بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وسيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على نهجه واستنى بسنته واقتدى بهده إلى يوم الدين We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite grace and boundless mercy to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us this gathering and to make it a blessed gathering, a gathering of light, a gathering of healing, a gathering of increase, a gathering of forgiveness, a gathering where the hearts and the opens, uh, the hearts and the minds are opened to the beauty and the wondrousness of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. May our hearts all be in a state of inshirah, of openness and expansion. May Allah illuminate us with the beauty of this religion. May Allah beautify the meanings of Islam in our hearts. And may He make hated to our hearts everything that is displeasing to Him and everything that may take us away from Him. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil alameen. Inshallah, we are going to be reflecting today upon the 35th wisdom or hikmah of the hikam of Ibn Ata'illah, secondary rahimahullah, wa nafa'anallahu bi'ulumihi fi daraini ameen. We are blessed and, and, and honored to have the likes of Ibn Ata'illah in our ranks, in our ummah. Um, scholars and sages and spiritual masters uh, and, and pious predecessors who have synthesized uh, so many of the sacred meanings and ideas and perspectives and understandings that equip us as followers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with what we need to thrive in this dunya, not just to exist, not just to you know make it by, but rather to thrive. And there is a pathway by the grace and the mercy and the generosity of Allah to thrive in this dunya. You know, we don't have to live begrudgingly. We don't have to live with this pain, this stress, this anxiety that overwhelms us all the time, day in and day out. But alhamdulillah, through surrendering ourselves to teachers and, 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 and forefathers of the likes of Ibn Ata'illah secondary and, and sitting at their feet to study from them and learn, then inshallah ta'ala, we have a pathway towards taqwa a pathway towards God consciousness and awareness and a love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that liberates the soul. May Allah allow that to be our reality together, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah, we'll read the hikmah, the wisdom, and then reflect upon it. Ibn Ata'illah says, Aslu kulli ma'asiyatin wa ghaflatin wa shahwatin ar-rida anil nafs. He says the source of every... <clears throat> disobedience and heedlessness and uh, blameworthy desirousness is self-satisfaction to be satisfied with the self and the source of every obedience and vigilance and virtue is dissatisfaction with oneself. So you see on the one hand, the source of every ma'asiyah, every disobedience, the source of all of that is self-satisfaction and the source of every virtue, if you will, in obedience is dissatisfaction with the self. And then he says, وَلِأَن تَصْحَبَ جَاهِلًا لَا يَرْضَى عَن نَفْسِهِ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ أَن تَصْحَبَ عَالِمًا يَرْضَى عَن نَفْسِهِ He says, it is better for you to keep the company with an ignorant man dissatisfied with himself than to keep company with a learned man satisfied with himself. For what knowledge is there in a self-satisfied scholar? What real knowledge is present in someone who's content with themselves and satisfied with themselves? He's questioning, he's challenging the actual knowledge of this person. And he says, And truly, what ignorance is there in an unlearned man that is dissatisfied with himself? So if, 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 if someone, the quality of a person who, who, who has no uh, theoretical knowledge, has no knowledge uh, technical details, etc. If the quality of that person who is identified as ignorant 
someone who is not satisfied with themselves, discontent with themselves, then that then then he's asking, then how can you describe that person as being ignorant? So he's redefining what knowledge means and what ignorance means. So I want to break this down into three parts. The first part, which is the nafs and the nature of the nafs. And then the second part is uh, what we have to do with regards to this nafs. And then the third is the question of relationships. Because each of these are integral in exploring this notion of what he's referring to as really the source, the source of all evil. You know, he's really coming to fundamental questions about the nature of things, the nature of actions and behaviors, evil, etc. So we're trying to explore together what this means. Now, some of these terms, the terms of غف معصية and غف لان شهوة, Sidi Ahmed Zarruqi defines them, and I think he defines them in a productive way for our, for our sake. So I want to you know, explore those definitions. He says that al-ma'asiya in this context, disobedience, mukhalafatu amri Allah al-wajib. So ma'asiya is when you contradict a obligation or command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what he is a ma'asiya. So the origin of every ma'asiya, and ma'asiya then is contradicting the commands of Allah, and the origin of every shahwa. And what is shahwa? Shahwa is you know, to, 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 to have uh, desirousness, etc. He says, الشَّهْوَ بِأَنَّهَا إِسْتِرْسَالٌ مَعَ النَّفْسِ فِي طَلَبِ الْمَلَذَّاتِ It is that when, when you leave the self and you follow the self in everything that it seeks desirously, that's what shahwa is. It's whenever my, my lower self is seeking something, is desiring something, is coveting something, I go along with it. Right? Rather than restrain it or control it or discipline it, no, I just go along. That's what shahwa is. And so the origin of that is this idea of arrida an nafs, being content with the self. And al ghafla, heedlessness in this context, he's saying, al huquq. It is when you derelict your the rights and the responsibilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Uh, has ob- ob- obligated or has recommended or has made praiseworthy, right? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has identified that you and I, we have duties and responsibilities and Allah has rights upon us. When we, when we, when we are derelict in our responsibilities and our duties, when we are neglectful in our duties and our responsibilities in the fulfillment of these rights, then we are ghafilin. We are heedless. And then conversely, he says, الطاعة Ta'a, obedience is muwafaqatu amrillah. It is when you are in accordance with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al-iffa, al-iffa, which is, uh, which is having vigilance or, or, or virtue, is tarku uh, dana'ati min kulli shay. When I, I am virtuous, when I leave that which is lowly in all affairs. You know, you think about, you think about making or earning money. You think about relationships you think about things that you can watch and sometimes things are people are observing sometimes people are not but when i proactively leave everything that's lowly everything that's aka filthy and ugly and 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 and, and really um uh, low in nature then then i have a, i'm a person of iffa and that's a and and that these these notions of ta'a and iffa and yaqadha being aware it is when I'm, I am, I am on guard. I'm aware. You know, this is the origin of all of these virtuous traits is dissatisfaction with the self. So it's important that we come to terms with uh, these, uh, uh, this, you know, terminology. We understand what it means and we understand how it's impacted because we certainly don't want the blameworthy traits that he referred to, and we certainly desire the praiseworthy traits. And we have to realize that it all comes back to a, a, a relationship with the self. How, how I am with myself, how I think about myself, how I perceive myself. These are the integral questions. And, you know, um, the, the fact is, is as follows. When I am content with something or I'm pleased with something, 
uh, or I validate someone or something, then I will rarely see the integral faults. Imam Shafi'i he says, وَعَيْنُ رِضَى عَنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَلِيلًا that when, 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 when a person has rida, contentment or acceptance of something, rarely does he see faults or he views faults in a very simple fashion. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, so this happens, for example, when someone falls in love with someone, you know, they have this very forgiving eye and they're so content and happy and, you know, fulfilled with this person. So the faults that they see from them, you know, it's just, you know, really not that big of a deal. And he says, conversely, kama anna. However, when I have, I'm discontent with someone or something, and I bothered with someone or something, then I see all of the faults. And so you see the same lovebirds in the beginning, you know, where they were very forgiving and didn't really make a big deal out of issues. Now, you know, the smallest thing, it's like the biggest evil. It's such a uh, shortcoming of this person and you're you see all of these masawi all of these faults in the person and so similarly the way in which i look at myself if i'm content with myself or i'm convinced with myself or my logic or my rationale of how i perceive things and i'm 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 i'm, I'm pleased kind of with 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 my rationale and so on then very often the huge problems that I have, I will overlook them. And I'll dismiss them as being small things. But if I am more critical of myself, I challenge my narrative, I question my, uh, my, 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 the, the, the goodness of myself, meaning am I really that virtuous or that pious? You know, sometimes, well, I'm good enough and Allah loves me and I'm sure I'm, I'm a good person. And I, I say, I use all this language to almost affirm myself, um, which, which can be certainly destructive. But if I'm more critical, then, I will, then the faults that I have within me will become far more evident and obvious. And this is a goal. The goal is, is muhasaba. The goal is, is accountability, is really looking upon myself and realizing the faults that it has. And then, you know, conversely, genuinely appreciating that I have fallen dismally short in fulfilling the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon me. That Allah has been so generous and kind and giving. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for me all the time, at any time. He is, whether, whether we re appreciate it or not, or are firm or, or, or recognize that or not, but that's the truth. You know, Allah is qareeb, Allah is close, Allah is so many things, and Allah has endless rights upon us, endless rights upon us. But when I, when I ignore all of that, you know, then, then, then there, there's, there, and, I, and I'm, I'm super indulgent in my own story, my own narrative, my own reality, I'm always thinking about uh, you know, uh, you know what I have, what I don't have, what I aspire to have, and I'm constantly absorbed within my own re personal reality. Then, then I'm an afsani being, and this is where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is very explicit about speaking about the nafs in the Quran, and this is why you know I Ibn Atayillah is telling us that the, the source of all of this evil is arrida an nafs, right? And you come to a realization that yes, so much of the evil that I am, uh, that that exists within me, and around me, is contentment with the self, and certainly the self is not to be, you know, uh, uh, an entity that I am pleased with. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us in the Quran, "Inna nafsa la amaratun bisu, illa man rahim rabbi." You know, these are the words of of Sayyidina Yusuf. Uh, in the Quran, in the nafs la amaratun bisu, that verily the nafs it compels towards evil. Illa ma rahim rabbi, except for those who Allah subhanahu wa taala has, you know, mercy upon. And so there is a nature to this nafs, this lower self of ours, and it commands towards evil. And Allah subhanahu wa taala makes it very clear in the Quran through posing a type of rhetorical question where He says, "Alam tara ila ladina yuzakuna anfusahum." You know, don't you look at those who praise themselves, right? They validate themselves. They aggrandize themselves. You know, and he asks it in a very 
uh, you know, rhetorical dismissive fashion. Like, how basically, how can these people be so worthy, uh, uh, be so pleased with themselves or praising of themselves? Allah, verily, it is Allah who praises whom He wills, and no one will be wronged. So, you know, Allah is describing how uh, blameworthy the trait of the human being is of those who who praise themselves and who are self-satisfied. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says more directly in Surah Al-Najm, uh, before it was Surah Al-Nisa, right? Verse, the chapters of Surah Al-Nisa, verse 49. Then now these verses are Surah Al-Najm, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verses uh, 32, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِإِمَنِ التَّقَى Don't praise yourselves. Don't do it. He... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'lamu, he has more knowledge, right, of those who are truly conscious, God conscious, who have taqwa. And you see how when you are, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the standing of people, whether it's males or females, people of all shapes, sizes and colors, he says, in akramakum, indallahi atqakum, the most dignified amongst you are those who have the most taqwa, the most God consciousness. And so you see worth, you know, this this idea of self-worth and value, it is not just because I have a particular color of my skin, then I'm a then I, I I'm a king or I'm a queen, right? Or that I come from a particular village or tribe or people, or that I have a certain you know a, 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 a nature to myself or a desire that I have or an impulse that I have, then I then affirm for myself a, a distinct, or that I'm of a particular gender, right, or sex, and therefore I am of X gender or Y gender, then therefore I am better than, I have more of, etc. No, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. The most dignified amongst you are the most God conscious. So virtue is a question, is a function of the extent to which I am mindful of Allah and I surrender to Allah. And so Allah, you know, He's telling us something very specific. Don't praise yourself. And don't, don't uh, you know, don't uh, validate yourself. And don't vie for yourself. You know, because there's a lot of vying for the self today. And a lot of the identity politics that exist are about vying for the self. Myself, my people, etc. My wants, my desires. And I attribute an inherent virtue to me or inherent virtue to the, 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 the wants that I have, or the perceptions that I have, or the desires that I have. And then I advocate for it as if it is virtue, or inherent virtue, and that is not the case. فَلَا تُزَكُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't praise yourself. <laughs> you know, don't advocate for yourself. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِنَا Allah is the one who has more knowledge of those who are mindful of Him. And so true dignity, and true honor, and true worth, lies in the extent to which I am in surrender and I'm in submission and I live in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked of me and that requires an ittiham in nafs that I challenge myself that I question myself yes that I go against myself because more often than not and it is the case that my nafs is against me and not for me that my, this thing called the nafs that we're talking about, this lower self, it is working against me and not for me. Your greatest enemy is the nafs that is within you. The Prophet ﷺ says in this vein, and this is a very critical hadith to be mindful of, ثَلَاثٌ muhlikat. I want you to remember this hadith because it's a very essential hadith. ثَلَاثٌ muhlikat Three things that destroy us. شُحٌ مُطَاعٌ شُح in this context means selfishness. Selfishness that is followed, that is obeyed. Right? And there is and, and, and there's a lot of selfishness in the human endeavor. Meaning that I wake, I have these wants, I have these aspirations, I have these desires... And I will really do whatever it takes to have what I want fulfilled. And so it is a selfish endeavor. And so I won't give from what I have, and I expect a lot, 
and I fight for what I want. I fight for uh, my interests, and I, I fight vehemently. I may do that at the behest of others. I may harm others in the process, etc. So three things that destroy amongst them is selfishness that is followed. وَهَوَا muttaba And a, a desire that is followed. Hawa, my hawa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهُ هَوَا Have you seen those who taken as their high lord, their hawa, their desires? So hawa that is followed destroys the person. وَإِعْجَابُ الْمَرْءِ بِنَفْسِهِ And when the person is impressed or pleased with themselves. That is a destructive force, not just for the self, but for others. So you see, in accordance with what Ibn Atayullah is saying here, that yes, the origin of all of these vices, if you will, is إِعْجَابُ الْمَرْءِ بِنَفْسِهِ Is that when I'm content with myself. And here, the Prophet ﷺ is very explicitly saying, وَإِعْجَابُ الْمَرْءِ بِنَفْسِهِ When I am content with myself, I'm pleased with myself. I'm very much convinced of what's in my mind. I have a, I have a perspective on life. I have a perspective on my own life. And you can't help me. And you don't understand. And you, you couldn't figure it out. And, and I have to do this because I understand and I know. Right? A lot of this, you know, people think that this whole question of being content with the self is just in accordance with like someone who's, who's arrogant or someone who's like, you know, walks around boastfully, etc., haughty. No, but it's also, you know, uh, this idea that my problems are unique, that I am unique in my disposition, in my reality. You know, that you, you, you wouldn't understand. Yeah, yeah, no, no, my problems, I have to just kind of deal with them on my own because my problems are so unique. They're so distinctive. That's just not the case. You know, and I'm, I'm sorry to, to, to burst everyone's bubble, but the, the, when, once we assume that we are special in this reality of life, then that's, that's, the, that's an indication of failure. That my circumstances are so unique, my problems are so unique, my aspirations are so unique. My self is so unique in all of what I want it to be and what it could be that I can be a leader and I can be in charge and I can be this and, I, and I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm infused with all sorts of very self-destructive, you know, self-centered notions. This is halak. <laughs> this is what the Prophet ﷺ is describing as destruction. And so yes, I have, to, I have to be far more weary of myself than I am content of myself or convinced of myself. Right? I'm convinced with what's in my mind. And you can't change my mind. No matter what you tell me, don't even try to give me advice. Because no matter what you tell me, your, your words are just going to fall flat. They're going to hit a brick wall. Because I know and you don't know. Right? And so many people, because of that nafsani orientation, it has come to be that nasiha, a true advice, no longer penetrates the soul. Because I'm so... Uh, full of myself and my thoughts and my opinions and my perspective and my convictions, then I, I don't have space for your thoughts. And actually your advice and your thoughts is just pain <laughs> and it's static noise and it's, it's empty and it's harmful. And the only thing I really want of you is to validate me and to praise me and to accept me and to love me and, to, and all these like, you know, empty platitudes sometimes. I'm not saying loving someone is empty, but you know, we can love someone, but what is true love? Prophet ﷺ loved people. He loved people like no one else loved people, but he gave people advice to their hearts and to their souls that resolved their issues. Advice that was challenging and that really challenged the status quo of what was standard in society, the status quo of people's lives and circumstances. You know, really challenged people's convictions about what they thought in terms of like the cultural imperatives, you know, uh, the ideas of what is virtuous and what is right and what is wrong. Prophet Sallallahu challenged everything in society because he brought the truth. And the truth is difficult. The truth sometimes really hurts. And so beware of yourself. Yes, because if I am full of myself, then I am blocking out so much khair, so much goodness, so much uh, uh, light, so much guidance because my nafs, is, my self is in the way. And the Prophet ﷺ says also in the hadith, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ شُحًّا مُطَاعِ If you see 
selfishness that is followed, and desires that are followed as well, and the, 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 the people consumed by this dunya, or you know, this dunya being really effective or impactful. And everyone is just so accepting or impressed or convinced of themselves and their ideas. Then just you know, focus on rectifying yourself. Right? Because he's indicating that when these qualities are, uh, you know, are, are uh, replete in society, and, and the s- society is saturated, and people are saturated with these types of uh, qualities, then this is an indication of halak, of destruction. No matter how pretty things look on the outside. And that's the case. Like, we live in an age when things look so pretty, and we've, we've refined so many things superficially. You know, the nature uh, 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 of so much of our architecture is just like these very jagged lines and blunt and uh, plastics and metals and mirrors and whatever and windows. And everything looks so polished and, and, and even people start to look polished, you know, with the, in the age of plastic surgery and Botox. Everything just looks like polished and plastic and like filled. But it's... It's it's empty on the inside. It's the it's it's you know uh, corroded on the inside. It's something we have to be very thoughtful about because no matter how th- nice things look on the outside, if 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 the nefs if the nefs has overtaken us and our society, then that's a very ugly thing, because the nefs is amara bisu. And you know uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah An Nisa. وَأُحْضِرَتِ الْأَنفُسُ الشُّحْ You know, the, the, the enfus, and this is in the context, subhanAllah, of, of, of divorce. And when a, and a husband and a wife are going through problems. And, and, and they're trying to adjudicate these matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He affirms a distinct truth that, that corrodes so many relationships. And subhanAllah, if people understood this verse, they really appreciate why so many relationships go foul. Wa uhdirati al anfusu shuh. Surah An Nisa, verse number one twenty eight. The nafs, in it there is shuh, there is selfishness. And you see, and and anyone who's been in the business of dealing with people who are going through a challenge in their relationship or divorce, you see how what 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 widens the gap between people. What really like expands that fissure is selfishness. Everyone starts to like, you know, really hunker down on themselves, start to vie for themselves, vindicate themselves, justify themselves, you know, defend themselves. They are and they have been the greatest part of this relationship, and the other per- person has been nothing but a demon, nothing but a heathen, nothing but a self, this, that, whatever. And I have been the embodiment of angelic presence, and I've been forgiving and giving and loving and caring and blah blah blah. And this person has been nothing but wrong. So it's it's so proud of the self, so self-aggrandizing, and that's nothing but the shahwa. And the, you know, I want anyone because sometimes when we sit with ourselves or people, we sit with others. And our nafs is really like bubbling. We're really convinced of ourselves. You know, we begin to really advocate for ourselves. This happens, by the way, online with da'wah and people who are, you know, uh, you know, are callers to Allah and, you know, truth, <laughs> truth callers and all this kind of stuff. You know, they become, they become maniacal. And they become, at times, insane in their disposition. And they think they are on the absolute truth. And they don't even see themselves anymore. And they don't want to even be countered for a moment because of how convinced they are they are upon the absolute truth. I can't tell you how many times I've been told by people that if you don't see it my way, then you just don't see the truth. If you don't see it my way, and this is not like these are subjective things, like if there's a conflict between two people, an argument or whatever, people expect now that you're either with me or you're against me. If you don't abide by the truth as I see it, then you're following falsehood. This is chaos. Like if you want to talk about chaos, this is chaos. Everyone's walking around with their truth. This is, there's no such thing as my truth. right? I mean, I know this is like a, a term that's used commonly, but there is no such thing as my truth. There is the truth. And Allah is al-haq. 
My truth and your truth, these very small, insignificant things, they're not truth. They are my very meager, basic, subjective opinion on things. And I could very well be wrong. My opinions could be wrong. My entire methodology and approach could be wrong. My whole outlook could be wrong. It could very well be, more often than not, that I am the source of the problem. And, and the truly prophetic orientation that is taught to us in the, in, in the sacred scripture is to orient uh, uh, yourself around the idea, uh, you know, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al I mean, that's, the, that's really the anthem, if you will, of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa anta subhanak. No God but you. Glorified be you. Inni kuntu min al Verily, I have been amongst those who are, who are oppressive, who are wrong. Right? Yeah, it is far often far more often the case that I am wrong than I am right. And that's the case for all of us. And we, we, need, we need a dose of real humility. And we need to be silenced. We need to silence ourselves. We need to really stop talking. And we need to just realize, hold on, maybe I'm a walking, talking disaster. You know, maybe I'm the one who's destroyed this marriage. Maybe I'm the one who's really destroyed my children. Maybe I'm the one who's, who's destroying this masjid. I'm, maybe I'm the one who's destroying this institute. Maybe I'm the one who's really harming thousands and thousands of Muslimin. And I think I'm the caller to truth, but I am just destroying. I'm making people doubt you know, scholarship and religiosity and practice. And, and people are starting to really doubt the entire enterprise of Islamic scholarship. And I'm sitting here saying, I'm a caller to truth. You know, brothers and sisters... Beware of yourselves. That's, that's all what Ibn Atayla is telling, telling us. You know, the asl, the origin of all of this evil is when you are convinced of yourself and when you like yourself and you're impressed by yourself and you're pleased with your opinions and all of what you have become. That's the disaster. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And so, Ibn, you know, from, from the remedies you know, that are given to us in this regard, is what Imam al-Busayri tells us. وَخَالِفِ النَّفْسَ وَالشَّيْطَانَ وَأَعْصِهِمَا You know, contradict the self and the shaytan and disobey them. وَإِنْهُمَا مَحَضَاكَ النُّصْحَفَ التَّهِمِ And you find, if you find yourself or the shaytan giving you, uh, you know, nasiha or, or like guiding you or telling you, you say, oh, be, be careful. Once, once you hear yourself saying, oh, this is what should be and this is what can be, you say, hold on, hold on, no, ittahim. You know, doubt and challenge and say, hold on. Let me ask the people of knowledge, should I do this? Should I say this? Should I take this path? You know, am I wrong here? Like I, right now, I'm going through these issues in my life. And I'm going through these circumstances. And this is how I'm viewing it all. Am I right to view it this way? Or is my perspective, my perspective, my perception completely way off? And I've said this a thousand times in these lectures. You know, the, the fun, the, the, so much of the suffering and the pain that we experience in life are, are the false narratives that we tell ourselves, the, the false opinions that we have. We, 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 we exaggerate everything. We exaggerate our problems. We exaggerate our circumstances. We exaggerate our existence, our life. Our life is not to be exaggerated. We're going to live here for a few years and it's all said and done. It's all over. Why do I exaggerate this life so much? You know, when, when the, the, the narrations that indicate that you're, you know, those who suffered the worst in this dunya, they were dipped in heaven for one second, and they're asked, do you remember anything? They're going to be they're gonna say, no, I don't remember a thing. So what does it tell you about this world? It's fleeting. Don't hold on to it too much. Everything, live in this dunya as if you're a passerby. Why all these prophetic narrations about don't settle, don't settle, it's live as a passerby, live as, uh, you know, uh, as if you're, uh, you know, an alien to this world. Because we're alien. We're, our souls are meant for the, for the akhirah, not for the dunya. You know, we are ukhrawi beings who have a dunyawi uh, uh, stationary, like momentary presence, and that's it. So not, 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 not for a moment should I be deluded by... You know, you know, some of us, if we really are self-critical, when we get into our heads and we think about, you know, the fact that we, we, we self-indulge in our thoughts and our perspectives and our opinions day in and day out for, for, for weeks and months and years, and we're living in utter, t like, torment and torture, and, and, and not realizing for a moment that it's all overkill. It's all exaggerated. 
And, and this is not me being dismissive. And if you feel that way, forgive me. I'm not being dismissive. I'm just trying to bring us all into a space of what is reality and what is not. You know, when I decide, you know what, this is a problem. This is a huge problem. You know what the problem is? You know, I live in an apartment and I don't live in a house. And that's a real issue. Because look at all these beautiful homes and look and look and look. And I can sit here and I can define these things as being a huge problem. And I can live out that reality. So I then resent my home. I resent my apartment. I, 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 I look down on it. I'm, I'm constantly dissatisfied and discontent. And I'm riddled with anxiety. And people ask me, what's wrong? No, you know, I just can't talk about it. What's, what's wrong? No, really, tell me what's wrong. No, no, I, I just I can't talk about it. It's just too much. And at the end of the day, it's the equivalent of I'm just not content with my apartment, you know, and I want a bigger house. Or, or you know, or, or I'm sick. Or, or I'm dealing with, uh, you know, a, a, a difficult family member. Or whatever the circumstances are. And I sit there. And I live within myself. And I exaggerate my reality in such a painful, suffocating, destructive, ihlaki fashion. Not realizing that it's all overdone. So... You know, khalif in nafs, contradict the self. A'asi, he says, wa'asihima, you know, disobey yourself. Don't obey yourself, disobey yourself. Then you'll start to find falah, oh, success, relief. You live in this dunya with measure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this dunya in balance, bil mizan. In measured, in a measured fashion. It's a very simple, this dunya is a very simple equation. It's not complex. It's momentary, it's fleeting. It's just coming to terms with these realities. And it's realizing that the asl of all of this suffering and pain is really a matter of perspective that is rooted in the, in the nafs. And so, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His rahman, from His grace, is that He made it that we are du'afa. It is from his hikmah, from his wisdom and his grace, that he's created us and we are weak. And this is what he says in Surah An-Nisa, وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ The person was created weak. Now one of the ulama, he has a beautiful uh, reflection on this. He says, you know, if you really contemplate, you will see the profound wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, and the expansiveness of his mercy and his grace. And that he has decreed this reality that we are created weak and that we are weak. And it is a type of very subtle and, and, and unique uh, tool of, of tarbiyah, of development, uh, of growth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the servant. Because when I realize my weakness, and, and by the way, all of the categories of people that we spoke about moment, moments ago, all of us... Right? We are aware of the fact that we're weak. Like, no one's going to say, like, oh, I'm strong, I'm, 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 you know. <laughs> I mean, people may go out and, like, project that idiotically, but internally they know they're weak. They have insecurities, they have weaknesses, they, they have a very bad, usually, opinion of themselves. So if you really go deep into it, you'll see that reality, right? So there is an inherent weakness, and that weakness is something we should embrace. Because what that weakness does is that it makes me more hadir. It'll make me more cautious about myself. And that weakness should lead me then to not be so convinced of myself or my opinions, or certainly not pleased with myself. Or that I trust myself. Like if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created me da'if, weak, and I feel that weakness, then I'm not going to rely on myself. Like none of us, uh, anyone who relies upon themselves, is asking for disaster. Really. Don't rely on yourself. Rely on Allah. That's why the, the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, Allahumma la takilni ila nafsi tarfata aynin aw aqalla min dhalik. Oh Allah, do not, allow, do, not relinqu- do not relinquish me to myself for the blink of an eye or even less than that. So, you know, in, those of us who embrace this tarbiyah, you know, the fact that this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who fashioned me this way. And he's in he's 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 instilled realities within within my spiritual DNA that makes me what I am. And so therefore I embrace my reality. I embrace my weak state. Right? And you know, I don't put on this false like people, 
you know, the, the, the modern day kind of convinces us that I can be the every person. I can be a spectacular spouse and a spectacular parent and a spectacular employee and I can, I can do it all and I can be magnificent and I can be all of these nonsensical like tropes that, the, that we're just constantly pummeled with. No, I'm, I'm a simple person. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to really work in a manner that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to do my part as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated me to do my part. But that's it. You know, Allah says in the Quran that He has not burdened a person with more than what they can handle. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Correct? And a lot of times, brothers and sisters, and, if, and really I want you to challenge yourself on this, so much of the burden that we feel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not obligated it upon us. It's the burden that we have chosen to carry. And by the way, very often burdens are ideas that we put in our heads, meaning that ideas we've convinced ourselves of, or perspectives, or stories, or narratives of what should be and what shouldn't be, and how can this be, and why is this? See, the, the reality is one thing. The story that we place upon that reality is a whole other thing, right? You know, death happens, illness happens. If I choose, I either choose to say, it's a difficult reality, but it's, it's the will of Allah, it's the nature of the dunya, it's painful, I'm going to find sadness, but I'm going to be patient, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, etc. Or I'm going to say, how can this happen? How can this happen to me? Why would this happen? I reject this happening. I will not accept this reality. This should not have happened to me. He was young, he was old, I am this, who am I going to have? Who's going to take care of me? And I start to have all, that's the story that I told myself, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having, uh, you know, uh, forced upon me. The same thing with the decisions, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, each of us, a set of, of responsibilities in life. So many of us today have decided to take on 20 extra responsibilities, unnecessarily. Right? Not that Allah has obligated them upon me. It's just that I have chosen to have this pursuit and that pursuit and this social pursuit and this political pursuit and I have a career and I have jobs and I have multiple jobs and I have this, that, whatever. Okay, when I break it down, did Allah ask me to do all these things? Nine out of those ten things, no, Allah did not ask me to do. I chose to do them. Now sometimes, sometimes, based on shura, based on seeking real guidance from people of knowledge, it may be very uh, suitable for a person to go into a particular spot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not obligated, but based on the circumstances, you or I may be the most qualified to enter into that space. But when now everyone has delusions of grandeur, and everyone is afflicted with what is known in, in, in social theory as the hero myth, everyone wants to be, you know, that, you know, just dign that person who's that really romanticized pictures taken of them, and they are the one, like, Look at the adulation, look at the accolade. You know, and we fall into this stuff, like subhanAllah, it's a self, you know, it's a, uh, you know self-realized reality, like a prophecy, where we, you know, we, we, we value things and then we celebrate it. You know, so who gets, who, 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 who's on the cover of this magazine or this periodical? Oh, congratulations, what an accomplishment, what a, what a spectacular, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, you know accomplishment or whatever. And in reality, it's that's not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has necessarily ob obligated or asked for. And, and it may not even really be that pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here in this nafsani world, we have basically neglected what is pleasing to Allah, neglected what really nourishes the soul and the heart, neglected that which is of true virtue and dignity. And we've then curated for ourselves this whole other alternative system of existing and being. And by the way, everyone, for the most part, is suffering in that alternative system. It's a broken system. It doesn't work because it's not in line with how Allah created me. Who knows what I need other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So a big part of all this is dispossessing myself of myself, dispossessing myself of my opinions and my perspectives, breaking it all down. I don't need to be anything if Allah doesn't want me to be. I have to basically fulfill... Like on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, what am I going to be accountable for? I'm going to be accountable for my five prayers. I'm going to be accountable for my fasts. I'm going to be accountable for my zakah. I'm going to be accountable for how I treated my parents. I'm going to be accountable for how I maintained my home. I'm going to be accountable for, you know, did I, did I fulfill my duties and responsibilities to those around me? 
Those are the lists that are going to... Allah's not going to... The, the first question is not going to be, you know, did you get yourself uh, into this career or this space or that reality or this political space or whatever, and, and did, you, you, did you, like, you know, did you make it? Did you break all the... Did you... No, that's not going to be the first question. Let's just be real about this. What's, what's, what's the reality of the Day of Judgment? That's what should really, you know, put everything into perspective for us. And let's be liberated by that truth. Because when we come to terms with the basics of what Allah has asked from us in this dunya, this dunya becomes a far easier place to live within. It doesn't have to be such a tormenting reality. It doesn't have to be. It's just a matter of, you know, get, let, let's, let us all collectively get over ourselves. Right? We just need to get over ourselves. May Allah guide us and forgive us, Ya Rabbi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, inshallah, we'll be closing up right now. Now, you know, Ibn, Ibn Ata'illah, in the, word, in the end of the hikmah, he says, um, you know, this idea of khayrun laka, be, you know, befriend an ignorant person. It is far better for that who does not, it was not content with himself. And it is far better than, you know, than the one who uh, is a person of knowledge. And they, all they do is, is are, are, all, all they are is content and pleased with themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, kind of illustrates this in the Quran through an example. He gives the the story Watlu Alayhim Naba Aladi Atainahu Ayatina Fansala Khaminha fa at Ba'ahu Shaytanu Fakana min al Gawin. Tell them the story of the man who uh, we gave our message. He sloughed them off, so taken so Satan took him as uh, as his follower. And he went astray. We gave him ayatin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but he dispossessed himself, himself of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِنْ تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثُ أَوْ تَتْرُكْهُ يَلْهَثُ ذَلِكَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا فَاقْصُصِ الْقَصَصَ لَعَلَّهُم يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if it had been for our, our will, we could have used these signs to raise him high. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave knowledge, gave wisdom. But this person instead clung to the earth, أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ In such a powerful description. You know, I gave you the knowledge, I gave you the wisdom, I gave you what you need to be free and to be liberated. But you held on to the earth, you know, you held on to the, 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 these material empty realities. أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ So you clung to the earth and followed your desires. SubhanAllah. I mean, that's, <laughs> that right there needs to be underlined a thousand times. You clung to the earth and you followed your desires. Clung to the earth. Fa How often? You know, and I want you to use this as a litmus test moving forward. When, you, when you're suffering with an issue, any issue that comes up, how much of this is me clinging to the earth and following my desires? Because if it's one of those two things, immediately realize I have a problem and the problem is me. If I'm clinging to the earth, no, let go of the dunya. Let it go. Just let go of the earth. And if I'm following my desire, following my, following my perspective, following then... There's a problem in my perspective. No, always look to Allah. Always look for the Prophet's guidance, etc. Because then the Prophet Allah describes, he says, he was like a dog that pants with a lolling tongue. Whether you drive it away or you leave it alone, it is constantly yalhath. You know, whether you drive it away or leave it alone, doesn't matter. Panting, you know. That panting is because of what? There's no calm. It's just <sighs> panting endlessly in the dunya. Because I didn't embrace the signs of Allah. I didn't embrace the guidance of Allah. So then, yes, that will be my reality in this dunya. Allah says, tell them the story. Such is the image of those who reject our signs. This is, so this description, this idea of the, the panting dog, regardless of whether they have, they have something to do or not, or they're like left alone or they're summoned, they're always panting. That is the image of those who reject the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell them the story so that they may reflect. These are, may Allah help us to reflect upon the stories of this Qur'an and, 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 and embrace its signs, embrace, it, embrace its guidance. And, and, and so therefore, brothers and sisters, we have to you know, make sure that we are around those who, who, who realize that they know very little and that they are not content with themselves and they're just, they're trying to to do good, and they're trying to do basic good, trying to be good people, 
and they don't really have like too much of a they're not they're not consumed by themselves not just the question of like i'm pleased with myself or content no i'm just not consumed with myself i'm i'm concerned with other things i'm trying to take care of my kids like f- the f- people that we take as friends people who are just unassuming you know those are the people we should spend time with beware of spending time with people who are overly consumed with themselves uh, you know uh, they 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 have a lot so they think that that much of what they have makes them special or unique you know because as human beings we have a deficiency and we're attracted to people who have you know we like the haves we don't like the have nots kind of thing right no but we should find the people because when you find the person who's not uh, impressed with themselves or self-indulgent or self-absorbed then you found a true wise person someone who's well guided and that person you know, maybe the most unassuming, simple person on earth. A person that you've overlooked a thousand times. A person who's in your community that you just kind of like, you know, dismiss as being like, oh, just like a sweet, simple, ignorant person. No, you know, surround yourself with those people. <laughs> Prophet ﷺ says, Allahumma ahini miskinan, you know, you know, allow me to live amongst the masakin, those who are, who are just simple, derelict. Wahshurni fi zumrat al-masakin, allow me to be on the day of judgment amongst the masakin. You know, so so don't you know, uh, find your your friends and your relationships should be with those type of people, simple people. Prophet ﷺ says, "Wahala turzakuna, wahala turzakuna." Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa tunsaruna illa bi duafaikum. Do you think that you're going to be given victory or that you will be given sustenance except with those amongst you who are weak? And the weak person is someone who embraces their reality. You know. That's why, you know, subhanAllah, those, the, those who don't have are most often the most generous. They give the most. The ones who have give the least because they have a sense of self. I made this. I brought this. Why would you even touch this? This is mine, you know? What's mine? What's yours? <laughs> right? How did that come to you? You know, those zeros in your bank, who brought them to, to your bank? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not mine this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed it so I, I don't I, I, I'm so unassuming I don't even see my wealth I don't see my, my, my health I don't see my power or my influence I don't see that I just see my weakness and my deficiency you know so the poet says don't ask about the person ask about the person's friend everyone will follow the one that they are with. So be mindful of the people that you're with. Because المرء على دين خليله, The person's upon the path of his or her uh, brother or sister. إن كنت في قوم فصاحب خيارهم If you're amongst the people, befriend the best of them. And the best of them in this context, those who are not content with themselves, those who are not self-indulgent, those who are, who, 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 who are not pleased with themselves. وَلَا تَصْحَبِ الْأَرْضَ فَتَرْضَ مَعَ الرَّدِي And don't, you know, don't befriend the ones who are, who are destitute or, you know, radi is, is more of like a negative indication of someone who's low because then you will become low, right? And lowliness in this case is being full of the self, absorbed with the self, etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to, to, to be beautified with beautiful company, beautiful friends, uh, and and beautiful meanings, ma'ani, you know, truths that that um, that come to, uh, you know, inform how we live and how we think and how we behave. Uh, let me ask. Let me just look at some of these questions, inshallah, and then we'll close. Assalamu alaikum. I'm dealing with our loved ones. How do we know when we are crossing the line in complimenting, validating them, and destructively feeding them into their ego? This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alhamdulillah has been very explicit about this. Where he has made it clear that you know, uh, uh, you know, saying truthfully what is in a person is completely fine. You know, you see someone who, mashallah, you know, did something very nice or or very uh, you know kind or generous, and you thank them for that, and it's the truth and it's the reality. Alhamdulillah. Certainly, don't exaggerate, don't overpraise, don't you know say things that are not truthful because that can harm a person. Um, uh, uh, you know, and and it, it's it's so critical that when we are dealing with our loved ones, that it's on the one end, it's it's important that we, you know, we 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 have empathy. You know, we share. Listen, I appreciate that you're going through it, and I know that you're experiencing this in a very visceral way, and I know that it's painful. 
Um, but, you know, as someone who loves you, I want to give you a, an alternate perspective here. I want you to, you know, open up your heart to a different consideration of what could be. And in that way, you know, I'm on the one end, I'm being empathetic, I'm being sympathetic, because I don't want anyone to think of what I was talking about as being, you know, not appreciating that people experience their pain, even if the pain is over exaggerated, as real pain, you know, the pain is real. And it's not about being dismissive, and it's not about being patronizing, no. Uh, you know, very often I speak the way I do to, to kind of awaken the senses, just so that we can, like, reconsider but, you know, when I'm dealing with someone, if someone comes to me like crying or wailing over their problem, I'm not going to, you know, dismiss them and just, you know, yell at them and say, you know, you're being ridiculous. No, I'm going to empathize. But then, you know, I need to figure out a pathway to get them to a type of self-awareness and to consider it an alternative. And that's a process of hikmah and wisdom. And listen, the Prophet Sallam, you know, he was willing to sometimes, uh, not sometimes, the Prophet Sallam was always willing to you know, um, challenge people uh, lovingly, even if it meant that these people may reject him, and be dislike him, and be angry with him, and and so you know we have to be very careful not to constantly um, capitulate to those around us just because you know we want we we want them to like us. That's not that's not really a prophetic goal or orientation. Assalamu alaikum. Oftentimes, the ones in leadership positions do not accept advice from others how to deal with this so institutions don't suffer. <sighs> All you can do is give advice. You know, وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ Convey. You know, give nasiha, give advice, give advice in all the ways that you know. And, um, and you know, if the person in charge is is just going to tank things, then, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, أَرْضُ اللَّهِ You know, we, we have to try and advocate and do the best that we can and push bil ihsan and 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 you know bring others to consider and to push and to challenge the status quo when it's obvious that that's the case and but if 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 at the end of the day it's leading nowhere and it's you know resources and efforts and energies are being overly exhausted then we have to find alternative ways to serve the deen of allah or to you know uh, to, to to help uh, in 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 perpetuating the beauty of this religion in in our world um, assalamu alaikum, barakallahu feekum. Uh, we're missing you dearly as well, our dear sister Blar. May Allah bless you. Um, how do how do we be confident in ourselves and and the work we do? Stand up for ourselves, but not fall into this chasm of being uh, over sure. What can we do to remind ourselves and bring us back every time? I would say that the answer to this question is Wallahu Taala Ala wa Alam. It's just a matter of making sure that that I am on a day-to-day -day basis, immersing myself in the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Because so often when we're out there just, you know, running running around like chickens with our heads cut off, whether it's in like careers or jobs or education or politics or society, whatever, you know, what's missing in all of this is 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 the fact that I've sat down and prayed calmly my, my Salatul Dhuhr or my Salatul Fajr or my Salatul Maghrib. And I've done it with intentionality. And I've actually given Dhuhr like 10 minutes of my focus and I've prayed the Sunan. And I've made the athkar, I've done the sunnah, the, the, the dhikr for salah. You know, how often am I doing that intentionally? And I'm immersing myself in the, in the realm of dhikr and fikr. You know, uh, this is why this session is called that, you know, dhikr and fikr. Uh, remembrance and contemplation and consideration. How often am I spending the time reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like really immersing myself in the words of Allah? Exploring the, the beautiful signs and just messages that Allah has in store for me in the Qur'an. How often am I really immersing myself every day in the space of, of the awrad, you know, of the, the morning litanies and the evening litanies? How much am I immersing myself in helping others every day by going and helping someone with their issues or their problems or opening up my homes to others? These are the things that ensure that I, am, I will remain grounded. But, you know, everyone who's, who's, who's overly active in any sphere, whether it's the quote-unquote da'wah sphere or the politics sphere, social sphere, if that's all I'm doing all the time, and what's being sacrificed is, you know, so much of my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the virtuous acts that I should be doing, then I have to really pause and rethink what I'm doing because there's no objective virtue in, in doing something in this dunya that's of social or political interest and it comes at the demise of my akhirah, then what's the point? Like, I'm not going to have a special consideration on the Day of Judgment that, well, yeah, I worked tirelessly on this social cause or this political cause or this da'awi cause, 
But on the day of judgment, like, it's a disaster. You know, my sins are overwhelmingly large. My hasanat are very few. My, fo- my obligations are not being fulfilled. Like, really, what have I done? You know, so it's just a matter of, as the Prophet ﷺ says, ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. You know, be keen on that which is of benefit to you. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. May Allah help us to do that. Isn't it right to claim that Sahaba were able to unattach from this dunya because their goal was to establish the deen of Allah throughout the earth? Uh, so, I, 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 brothers, I mean, the sincerity.